Good afternoon. We're live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, and joining us here at the PAO console is the International Space Station Flight Director, Mike Lammers. Thanks for joining us. Oh, glad to be here. Um, one of the big activities last week that's continuing this week is the upgrades for the ISS KU communication system. That's right. Can you fill us in a little bit about what was done last week? That was a, a lot of activity. Sure, sure. Um, last week, what we did is we installed what we call um, KU communications unit number two. Um, you'll hear me call it the KU comm unit, but this was... Um, the KU system on board the space station is is really uh, what allows us to utilize um, the space station. We have another system called S-Band that's um, uh, a radio system that we use to talk to the crew. Previously, it was the only way we could talk to the crew as well as uh, issue um, commands to the vehicle and get kind of systems telemetry that basically allows us to keep um, space station running. It's sort of like... Uh, sort of like the uh, city maintenance department, if you would. Um, the KU band is really the high rate um, data where we have uh, megabits of data coming down to bring down science and all the nice video that you see. And, and really, as far as using the space station for what's, what it's intended for, that's, that's all done with KU band. Um, the KU band system that we had on board the vehicle is uh, over a decade old. Um, it, uh, we're, when we're looking at uh, end of life um, with the vehicle, um, and maintaining um, KU band systems over the next uh, decade or so. Uh, we had to determine whether we were just going to build new versions of what essentially is mid-90s technology or we're going to take uh, the next step and kind of come up with more ad advanced communication systems. And uh, we chose to do more advanced communication systems. And uh, what we did last week um, was the tail end of about four years of work um, to upgrade um, both the system on board the vehicle, which was this... Um, piece of avionics called the KU comm unit um, that was uh, that was developed by NASA and Boeing, but as well as a number of upgrades um, on the ground network, uh, both at uh, Johnson Space Center, the Marshall Space Flight Center, and out at uh, White Sands, uh, where, where our Tedris downlink is. And that, um, that four years of planning all sort of came to a head last week, where we had the crew essentially pull out um, the old system uh, and install the new system and, uh, and, and activate it. Um, and we, we activated it from the ground. And it actually went uh, uh, quite well for uh, the number of, of what I call moving parts going on. Um, we, we, uh, we got the unit in. Um, it took the crew all day. Both, both, uh, both Tom, Tom and uh, Chris Hadfield spent the entire day doing it. And when we were done, we uh, activated the system, uh, did a brief checkout and, uh, of, of RF systems, and, and essentially ended the day with uh, with a fully functioning KU band system, um, both providing us uh, payload data like, like the old system did before, but as well as we picked up uh, two new um, space to ground voice channels, space to ground three and four, and uh, we picked up two uh, brand new um, video channels. So we've gone from four video channels to six, and if you ask me, I think they look a little bit better, um, but uh, we'll see how that works. And uh, we also changed the way we record a lot of our video on board. We used to do it with tapes, um, which, which uh, has uh, uh, some artifacts and, 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 and things. It's, it's sort of like going from a VCR to, to iTunes, I call it, where, where you go to a much more clear um, digital picture and we're able to bring down a lot more, uh, record a lot more video and bring down a lot more video um, from the vehicle. So all went quite well. That's great to hear. It was a, a big effort. Um, you kind of alluded to it. Some of the changes in the upgrades are visual things that we can see the new the new channels, but some of them are not. Can you speak a little bit more about some of the sure. benefits um, of this? The single uh, biggest change that we did is we brought the um, downlink rate of uh, the vehicle from 150 megabits per second of data to uh, 300 megabits per second. So the amount of payload data that we could bring down has doubled. And just to give um, folks a comparison, uh, as you know, a lot of us have um, broadband cable at home. I know I do in mine. Um, my cable company, the basic uh, broadband is six, six megabits. So, uh, you know, multiply that by 50, and that's what you've got coming down from the vehicle, which is, um, you know, I grew up in a, a world working on some other satellites where we talked on, uh, on kilobits of data. So it's, uh, it's a tremendous amount of data that we can bring down from the vehicle. And for folks who don't know, like when we're looking at the timeline that 
both the ground team and the on orbit crew use, you're actually scheduling that bandwidth. So this oh, is yes. a, a considerable enhancement to the operations. Yes, and that's right. And what we used to have to do is uh, there's certain um, payloads on board the vehicle, especially ones that use a lot of um, video, where we had to very carefully schedule them. And uh, and essentially, we, we couldn't run them all the time because we ran into um, uh, bottlenecks on the bandwidth, much much like you might at home with, with internet. If, if you have somebody that watches movies, you may find that you can't do something useful um, on your end on another computer. And we're hoping to reduce a, a lot of those um, uh, bottlenecks as well as being able to support uh, payloads that, that use a lot more bandwidth. So I know it's it's still new. You're not even fully done yet. Um, it's only been the weekend, but what's been the initial feedback so far from the team? Um, the initial feedback um, has been great. Uh, when we uh, when we activated this last week, uh, it, it, it went almost um, by the book like we practiced it in testing. Um, it was kind of funny. We, we, uh, we ran about an hour behind when we were... Um, uh, configuring some settings that I like into a lot like if you're trying to get a router to work at your house and, and you can't get it working and, and it was the same uh, type of settings but we uh, we got them corrected and it's been working really well ever since. The feedback that I've gotten from folks is that uh, that the video looks more clear. Um, we haven't yet taken full advantage of all the bandwidth. Uh, we're kind of ramping that in. Um, I will tell you that Space to Ground 3, um, the crew got right on that and started using it uh, right away, which has uh, made it actually rather challenging for our Capcoms to keep track of all the conversations going on, but it is kind of nice. Uh, we used to, with Space of Grounds 1 and 2, um, with six people on board, we used to uh, run into, um, uh, you know, basically tie-ups on communications where um, essentially the crew was waiting in line uh, on um, on space to ground and with with three available that hasn't happened in fact I was on console last week and there's a payload called um, bass where the um, where the uh, the um, the researcher actually talks directly to the crew as they manipulate um, uh, flames inside of the uh, inside of the glove box and it was actually very nice because uh, we could just give them space to ground three and they were able to just um, talk and they didn't have to worry about interrupting some of the other conversations going on with the other five crew members so uh, everyone was really happy to see that that's a great example of how this is going to really enable, since um, science and experiment and research work has become such a uh, dominant activity on board, this is really going to uh, enhance that. Right, and that that's what we're all hoping for when we did this. So um, now looking at the week ahead, can you kind of step us through what, what the plan? What we sure. Um, looking at the week ahead, uh, the main thing is we've gotten, you know, we've done the hard work. We've gotten the first uh, unit in. We've been working uh, working with it, and it's been working great both at the end of last week and through the weekend. Uh, we have to put in a second um, redundant uh, unit, which we call KU Communit 1, even though it's the second one going in, it's it's number one. But uh, that's actually an, an, um, an enhancement to the system because it's actually a redundant piece of equipment. Um, until this time, um, our KU band system, a single failure could take it out, um, which was um, which was probably acceptable a little bit earlier in the program as we were assembling, but we've become um, so um, uh, dependent upon KU band for, for our science community that getting the redundancy in there is, is going to be a real boon for us. So uh, on Thursday, what we uh, plan to do is install that redundant unit, and uh, we hope to um, uh, activate it as far as possible. We're still kind of going through the process of, of when we actually will um, fully turn that on and activate it and start using it for science because we're trying to balance um, um, an outage of, of, of KU band that we have to have to activate that with our science users who, who have been continuing to, to schedule and do science activities throughout this week, uh, which has been pretty challenging. It's a lot like changing the, uh, the tire on your car as you're, as you're driving along. You know, you want to minimize those outages, but yet do the, up, the upgrade. You alluded to it a little bit earlier in this interview, the, the teams and the work that's gone into this. Um, it was described last week, I think, by the MMM, MMT uh, management saying that these upgrades are accelerating the station communication systems about 10 years, and it didn't happen overnight. Can you share with us a little bit more sure. about what it took for those, you know, for those years of planning and testing sure. to make this happen? I know, uh, I know that we've had uh, teams of folks um, uh, really fairly um, 
uh, involved teams at both Johnson Space Center and uh, Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, uh, working on this for about uh, four years, along with the engineering community who's been developing this in Boeing. Um, I've been I've been involved for about a year as it came to uh, fruition. Uh, they, those uh, folks um, just learning how the system works. Uh, they uh, they worked together and they did um, testing almost every week with uh, hardware that we have on the ground um, just to get ready for this. One of the one of the kind of the challenges is in something that's sort of unique about this particular system is it's jointly run by um, flight controllers um, both in Huntsville and at uh, JSC and those guys uh, have been working working really um, well together and kind of going through the challenge of not being able to walk uh, next door and talk to your office mate about a problem. And I've been, you know, just very impressed by the whole team and, and, and how they've been working together. And we should ask, tell us a little bit about your role in this. Sure, I'm the uh, I'm the flight director that's uh, been the lead for this, and so I've been working the uh, ops integration and the activation, and so uh, my teams, both both uh, myself and then of course a, a key group of uh, flight controllers here in the room, um, have developed the the uh, the uh, plans and procedures for taking um, what engineering has given us and then figuring out how to uh, operationally utilize it and how to operationally uh, install it and activate it, and uh, it's. Uh, it's a really great team I have. They all, you know, they're they're the ones doing all the work. I just kind of, uh, my job is just to enable them to do their great things, and uh, it's it's been really a, a lot of fun to do this. Well, congratulations on the progress so far. I know there's been a lot of enthusiasm from the team on how it's gone. So, uh, kudos to you and all the team, and we'll stand by and continue to watch the activities unfold this week. Okay, thank you. Thanks for joining us again. That was Mike Lammers, the International Space Station flight director, overseeing some of the. KU communication system upgrades. Thank you.